Yes, and that was Adonai by the Nations Band. I like that incredible song. I like that confession. Adonai, you are my cornerstone. Ladies and gents, it's that incredible time again. We do apologize for the slight delay. Uh, the man of God is here with us today. It's a beautiful Saturday morning, and it's me, your host, John. Uh, pardon me for my voice. I know my voice doesn't sound like this normally. It's just been spiced up. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> oh, Pastor Mark, it's great to have you in the house again. Oh, wonderful being with you, sir. And uh, yes, indeed, our voices are spiced up. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, I've got the husky yeah, voice. Yeah. And, and me too. It seems like, it seems like uh, you know, uh, when you go and you minister a couple of places and you travel a bit, mm. when you come back, you don't sound like, mm. <laughs> you're like your old novel self. <laughs> But, uh, Absolutely. But uh, what a wonderful privilege mm. and what an honor it is to me to mm. just be with you here this morning in studio. Mm. And uh, hi to all our wonderful listeners on our radio app, mm. those who are following on our social media platforms. Uh, welcome. This is God and Me Time. Mm. This is that program where we just settle down on a Saturday morning. We have our weekly sabbatical, our weekly hiatus. We just have our morning where we have our breakfast on the Sabbath uh, and we we just take a book or pen or notepad and we take our device, we follow along we go through the word of the Lord and we just prepare ourselves, we fill mm. our spirit man with what is required for us to go into the new week, the new week which obviously starts, obviously starts tomorrow mm. as we enter tomorrow into the presence of God we want to wish all of our Ladies, mm. a very special Women's Month. This is the month of August, a uh, Women's Month. And may all the ladies just experience the goodness of God in your lives. Um, and uh, shout out, shout out, uh, if I may say, uh, wow, all my family in on that side of the world, um, the the uh, Hoffman family roasted me in, in Fort Rekkers, um, also uh, the Smith family who hosted me in Valhalla. Um, and then we also have uh, the Hermans family who hosted me in Devlin, in Johannesburg. Uh, and we also have uh, my friend, um, Apostle Jasmine Davids, uh, who also met up with us in Club Spread uh, in Johannesburg. So it was a wonderful time of uh, uh, seeing uh, good friends in the ministry and also having some time of fellowship, some precious moments, uh, some beautiful services, um, and yeah, God has just been so good, and God has just been so faithful, sir, and I'm glad to be back. Mm. I had I had the privilege uh, of um, uh, during 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 our breakfast mm. last week, I had the privilege of, of, of watching uh, you guys <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. I, for, for a change, a very welcome change, sir, I had the privilege of watching God and Me Time on Facebook. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> awesome. It yeah, was yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah. It was wonderful. <laughs> hey, I followed you as, as Pastor Matthew was ministering on mm. El Olam, uh, ministering on uh, uh, opportunity to reconnect with our Father. What a blessed and what a wonderful um, thought that was extrapolated from the, the, the disciples' prayer, mm. which people normally know as the Our Lord's Father, prayer. the prayer. Mm. But it was beautiful. Uh, and uh, and just enjoyed being on the other side and logging in to Facebook, getting my notification. Mm. Uh, God and me time is going live now. <laughs> and uh, yeah, to, to, to everybody uh, at Agape FM, keep up the good work, um, guys. You know, you never know. You never know who you reach and who you impact mm. uh, when, you, when you have a platform like this and, and when you are ministering mm. on a platform like this. I've, I, I bumped into some people. Mm. That I haven't met yet, mm. who started talking to me about agape, and I'm like, wow, this, mm. this is, this is, 
the, 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 the platform that God has given us is so much bigger than we sometimes think of mm. because sometimes you would look at um, listenership mm. or we'd look at numbers mm. and you and there's no there's no um, metric to measure mm. how many people have downloaded mm. that, the app mm. and are listening mm. to that there's no um, mm. quantifying that so people would uh, uh, switch it on whenever and then listen press mm. that press that red play button and, <laughs> and then just <laughs> listen and you don't even know you you know, so yeah, it was a wonderful time, and um, we are we are back in the house, uh, <laughs> back in this wonderful <laughs> studio. Uh, God has been faithful. God has God has carried us through myself and my wife, our family. Mm. The Lord has carried us through 17 years mm. uh, of mm. marriage, uh, ups and downs, uh, uh, difficult times, blessed times. But God has been faithful throughout, mm. and God has just blessed us with. So much, and we're just so grateful mm. for the growing uh, uh, blessings, love, and respect um, that is there. Then I also have a, another shout out today uh, okay. on this day, on this anniversary day that we're celebrating. Anniversary, I have a, a very special woman of God who is celebrating her birthday today. And mm. I would just like to um, send a shout out to my dear sister, Eureka Campbell. I know you're listening. And um, my woman of God, I just want to reiterate what I said earlier this morning. Um, Psalms 23 is your portion. Mm. Um, Jehovah, our God, is your shepherd. And uh, only goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And as you remain in the house of the Lord. Mm. And then I also have um, a, 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 another shout out that I would like to handle and that I would like to finish off. Mm. There's a little boy. His name is Caleb. <laughs> this little boy is my nephew. It's my youngest sister's son. Mm. When I when I left PE, Caleb and his father, Evangelist Jackson, dropped me at the airport. And when Caleb went home, Caleb mm. is now almost four, and he went home and he said, Uncle Mark is sleeping in the airport. Mm. And Uncle Mark is going to be, going to wake up in Job. <laughs> 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 and when I came back, he was like, you see, Uncle Mark is back now. So I know Caleb is also listening. So they've got the screen mm. where they where they watch us. Uh, they do this uh, through the smart TV and then they just watch us on mm. Facebook on TV. Oh, and he just laughs and, ah, Uncle Mark, <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Mark. So I must acknowledge Caleb and Gabby at home, his sister, Zachary, mm. also watching. Mm. Um, I would like to um, encourage them. This morning, our ladies. Uh, there's a, there's a. The, the, the Bible says in in, in uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter mm. three and verse one. It speaks about the times. It says there's a time and a season for every purpose, you know, under the sun. Mm. And um, during this month, we commemorate um, Women's Month. It's not. Um, it is something good to commemorate, but it is mm. also not something. As joyful as it is supposed to be, you know, mm, because because mm. we are actually thinking of um, in the 60s when there was the women's march and the, the problem was that... Um, the political powers at the time mm. were exerting pressure on families and mm. families mm. were about to scatter because of past laws and people mm. were restricted to certain areas and mm. so on. And then these women knew that if the men uh, must only stay where they work and they mm. cannot come to the families, there's going to be problems. There's going to mm. be domestic household mm. problems. Mm. So they took it upon themselves to, mm. to organize themselves, more than 20,000 women, sure. and they marched to the union buildings on the 9th of August and they demanded that these past laws be scrapped and, and those women that rose up united mm. actually saved so many families mm. so from, from destruction mm. so so it is it is, it is a, a bittersweet commemoration we, 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 we are happy because uh, the women took initiative mm. and, 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 and uh, because of their initiative mm. now we are able to do certain things we have certain freedoms mm. um 
it might seem like that is a political move or what, but I believe that that anything good comes from God. You know, mm. the Bible says mm. all good gifts mm. come from our Father above. You know, so so I would like to just um, 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 focus in and 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 zoom in on the ladies mm. and and encourage the ladies. Mm. You know, during this month because we 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 often find that the 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 standards of the world infiltrate the kingdom of God whereas mm. it is supposed to be the other way around mm. um, I I do not know a God who is a chauvinist God is not a chauvinist he's mm. not a woman banger or woman basher or mm. he is not into um, degrading or uh, into demoting women no not mm. the God that I know because because um, my Bible says uh, he created them male and female mm. he created these ladies for for a purpose mm. you know then the the devil came in through his wiles mm. and then he started a gender war back in the garden but we 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 not even we don't have enough time to go into that but he's the one that initiated the gender war and that spirit has been coming on through the ages and now we have this critical moment where we find ourselves dealing with a millennia worth mm. of uh, damage that has mm. been inflicted and i believe that 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 it is time for healing. Mm. It is time for restoration. Mm. It is time that the Lord um, mm. would illuminate our understanding and enlighten us to mm. the fact that God created men and women for a purpose. Mm. Now, now we are we are we are hijacking this uh, uh, Women's Month mm. uh, in the Kingdom of God, and we are we are now from a Kingdom perspective uh, reinforcing mm. uh, our ladies, uh, you know, and uh, just strengthening them. So. So um, as we are about to go into our into our reading, I would like us to to turn our our attention to to the book of Judges, the book of Judges, chapter four, and we're going to read verse five. Um, mm. Judges, chapter four, verse five. Um, Father God, we just pray your blessing on the reading of your word. We know that your word is already blessed, Father, um, and we know that uh, um, our understanding should be aligned to what you have revealed to us in your word. Father, I pray that you would remove our carnality and our flesh and allow us to be to be um, uh, conduits of your goodness and your grace and may your divine uh, wisdom, knowledge and understanding just flow through us and enlighten in our senses in the mighty name of Jesus. Come and be glorified. Come and take your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are reading in Judges chapter 4. Mm. Judges chapter 4 verse 5 says the following. It says, um, And she used to sit under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the sons of Israel came up to her for judgment. Now we are we are um, introduced to a a lady by the name of Deborah mm. in this particular portion of scripture. Mm. Now, um, in order to lay some uh, groundwork and some context for for who Deborah was and what she meant to the people of Israel, we need to refer to a more recent example of a lady in leadership um, the, the the prime the former prime minister of, of England of, of Britain mm -hmm. was a lady by the name of Margaret Thatcher mm -hmm. uh, and Margaret Thatcher uh, in the 80s uh, through the 90s was referred to she was called the the iron lady yeah the <laughs> iron lady and that, it sounds like a very intimidating title you know but i believe it it's because of her uh, uncompromising strength in leadership and maybe because she she believed in her ability to fulfill a particular purpose mm -hmm. so 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 there there's a there's a a biopic like a movie um, um, based on it's not like a biography it's not like uh, a, a verbatim the way the person lives by, lived but mm -hmm. when it's a biopic they they take some main elements and they and they they, they basically fill in some gaps and they create a story mm -hmm. but there's this bi biographical movie about about the iron lady and uh, it's, it's Meryl Streep playing playing in that in that movie and that movie tells the story of the life of this lady mm -hmm. and when 
when I saw that, um, I'm not really a poli political commentator or political pundit. I, I, I don't really uh, f focus on that so much. But when I saw that, I was reminded of, of, of a, a person I would bet or a person that I would really uh, 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 back to be the the, the original mm. Iron Lady of the Bible, mm. and I believe that is that is Deborah. Mm. Deborah is the original Iron Lady of the Bible, and mm. and and even though Deborah wasn't perfect, and also mm. uh, uh, Lady Margaret Thatcher wasn't perfect, because we are all not perfect, but we 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 can take a page out of the life of somebody, mm. and we can just um, learn and. Uh, take some of the best practices from there mm -hmm. and uh, as I read amongst um, or as I read in Judges chapter 4 mm -hmm. and verse 5 um, it says she used to sit under the palm tree of Deborah mm -hmm. between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim mm -hmm. and the sons of Israel came up to her for judgment um, the, the, the first thing that said um, Margaret Thatcher part um, as a inspirational leader is because she was a woman mm -hmm. and that was uncommon she she was entering a man's world and um, the same thing transpired in the life of Deborah because Deborah was was living during a time of extreme uh, uh, patriarchy, if I can call it that, it was a time where the power the dynamics were were heavily tilted in front in in favor of the male mm. agenda. Uh, there were certain things that men did and certain things that ladies did, and the ladies they they were not seen as unimportant, but their role was um, was uh, uh, limited or to domestic issues, family issues, mm. whereby whereby economic and military and Political issues were more the male role. So the ladies were the ladies were they were um, entrepreneur. Uh, they had entrepreneurial savvy and they they did business and what. But it was based on community level in amongst their homes and mm -hmm. so on. And so as 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 I read um, about Deborah, I realized that 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 God. God isn't a chauvinist. Uh, the, the, we, we, we are not sitting in 2022 and with the focus on liberating and equalizing things in favor of the ladies. If you, if you, are, if you are of the world, then 2022 is the first time that you hear about rights and about equal rights and so on. But if you are in the kingdom and you know these things, then you realize that, that God chose a specific person it, regardless of her gender, regardless of this person being a female, mm. God chose this person to be a judge. Mm. Now, now we, we need to understand, if you read in Judges chapter 1, verse 1, you'll, you'll see there that the Bible says, and God chose these judges to, to lead, uh, to judge. The word judge there was, is basically an, an, an interpretation of the word lead. It is, like, it is like saying that this person is the president of the country. Mm. Well, that person is the king. Same thing, mm -hmm. because the roles and responsibilities mm -hmm. were the same. Mm -hmm. they, they they had to lead the people. This was before um, the inter the introduction of of political kings. This was before King Saul and King David. So 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 God God in His wisdom mm -hmm. chose a woman mm -hmm. to be the judge. You know, mm -hmm. and, and 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 not the judge as in a person sitting in a court. The, the, this this judge was more like a political leader of the nation that was that was the president slash the the judge slash the 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 all of those in one you know it was it's like a king mm -hmm. you know where, where where this person makes decisions and this person's decision is final and god chose this lady mm -hmm. the the reason why i can say with confidence that god chose this lady is god used that Judges chapter 4 verse 5 says, mm. the sons of Israel came up to her for judgment. That tells me that, 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 that God had confidence in this lady. And it also tells me that the nation recognized the spiritual weight mm. of this lady's position. Mm. They, they went up to her. If she sat there and called them and they didn't come and they didn't acknowledge her, it would be a different story. Mm. But she sat and they came. There were queues of people coming and asking her for advice 
there were military leaders, there were civil leaders, there were religious leaders, mm. they were all going to, to this woman. Mm. And during a time when when women were uh, uh, not really regarded as, 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 as people who could fulfill such a role, mm. but the anointing of God was upon this lady. Mm. And and I want to I want to tell people that uh, and especially our ladies that we should never ever allow the world mm. to dictate to us mm. what we can and what we cannot do. Mm. Because because in each of us God has placed something something special, something unique, something significant. Mm. And I want to encourage you as a lady to to find that thing that uh, God has placed in sign. If I'm not, I'm not promoting a gender war. I'm not telling ladies, ladies fight against the men because they've been oppressing you. That is not what I'm. That's counterproductive. Mm. I'm telling you that that, irrespective of and regardless of what they think and what they say and what they have decided, mm. God has placed something significant inside of you. Mm. That that is so beautiful. Once you realize that God doesn't need anybody's permission to use you. Mm. Uh, uh, God only needs your willingness and your availability. Then, then it is so liberating because then you, then you, you lose your propensity towards comparisons. You don't, you don't need to compete with anybody because God placed it in me, and it can never be in you in the same way. What God placed in you can never be in me in the same way. So, 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 which means that we are, we are already losing out. Um, uh, uh, or we're already losing our 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 competitive and comparative nature that is that is that that normally leads us to either uh, uh, sinful pride or low self-esteem. We we're cutting out so much rubbish out of our life once we just realize that there's no reason for me to to to, to challenge John because John can never be Mark and Mark can never be John and 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 the only way that we can be better is if we can work together side by side you know mm. then we have John and Mark then the Bible says uh, in, in, in Ecclesiastes chapter 4 mm. and verse 9 2 is better than one because if the one falls the other one can pick him up and the two of them have a, a, a bigger reward for their for their labor mm. so he's actually telling us you, you, you you're gonna get more done mm. when you work together so I would like to encourage our ladies to see yourselves as 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 people whom God has called to complement society. Mm. He's placed something inside of you that is complementary, mm. not competitive towards, but complementary mm. to what is already out there. So so we find the location, Judges 4 verse 5, the place where this lady was sitting. Mm. Uh, we need to understand that she she's the only person whoever in the scriptures who, who sat in the top Echelons of, of governmental mm -hmm. office. The only lady out of all of them, this Deborah, mm -hmm. and she holds the, the, the honor of being the only one in history, recorded history, that used to sit in this specific spot mm -hmm. between Rama and Bethel. Now, now we need to quickly um, do a little bit of uh, hermeneutics here. Rama and Bethel. Rama means um, the heights. It means elevation. Mm. It means to be high. Um, and then those towns around Rama, they were all on a higher elevation. Mm. In Judges chapter 18, verse 25, we find that, that those were uh, the towns of Benjamin. They were all at a high elevation. Mm. Now, now um, Benjamin... The name Benjamin means mm. the, the, the son of my right hand or the strength of my right hand. Mm. So, so, so she was sitting uh, in a position of power mm. between Rama, mm. the high places where the strength of the right hand is, mm. and Bethel. And we know Bethel from Genesis. We know what Bethel means. Genesis 28 verse 19 tells us that Bethel is the house of God. Mm. It's the place where Jacob slept in the field on a stone. And also Genesis 35 and 6 tells us that, that he renamed that place. It was called Luz, but now it became Bethel. 
This tells me something wonderful about Deborah. Deborah was sitting and her influence was extending towards civil society in the heights of society. And her influence was also extending towards Bethel, which is the house of God. So she was not one-sided or unbalanced or out of sync with what was happening in the world and what was happening in the house of God. So she became sort of like a bridge between the world and the house of God, between politics and religion, between uh, family and business. She was a, a unifier uh, in her position. And once again, she was a woman. <laughs> she was not a man. I want to encourage you ladies out there. There's nothing that God has placed in your heart to do that you cannot do because you are a woman. Don't ever feel inferior because our God does not subscribe to the standards of this world. The Lord has placed Deborah in a strategic position. And I know each and every one of our ladies out there. They are placed in a strategic position. You have people that listen to you. You have children that listen to you. You know, there's a saying that says the, the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. That saying says that the mothers have a lot of influence mm -hmm. over how children grow up and, and what type of adults they eventually grow into. Mm -hmm. So it's very important for our ladies to know that, that they are important. Uh, this was against all the contemporary norms and against the, the grain of society, but God mm -hmm. does not subscribe to the norms of society. Anybody mm -hmm. who says that God cannot use women, this passage of scripture, it just gives you mm -hmm. Technical knockout, man. TKO. There's no way of defending against this. This was God. This woman wasn't voted in. The same spirit that rested upon Deborah is the same Holy Spirit, the same Ruach that still unctionizes us to this very day. And if God decides that he wants to use a woman for a particular role, who am I? And who am you? Who are you <laughs> to, to, to go against against God. Mm -hmm. Judges chapter 5 verse 7. It's the same uh, narrative around Deborah. Mm -hmm. and, and this is inspiring. Judges chapter 5 verse 7. This is the villages in Israel would not fight. They held back until I, Deborah, arose. Until I arose a mother in Israel. Think about this. This, out of all the titles and designations that Deborah could rightfully ascribe to herself, she could have called herself a, a general or a judge or a prophetess or a leader. You know what she calls herself? She calls herself a mother. Mm -hmm. she, 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 she basically tells us that the core mm -hmm. of her being is geared towards motherhood. Now, this means two things. It means that whatever lofty heights and positions we actually attain, or you as ladies attain to, whatever you become in life, it starts at home. Mm. Be a good mother. Mm. Then it also tells us that even if you are just inside the four walls at home being a mother, mm. you are producing tomorrow's presidents. Mm. You are producing tomorrow's businessmen. Mm. You are producing tomorrow's preachers. So, so, so it tells us two things that mothers, you are important. Mm. Whether you are a stay-at-home mom, whether you are a mom in business or a mom in the corporate world, you are equally important. Don't ever tell yourself I'm nothing because I'm just sitting here in this house the whole day doing nothing. If you were not in that house, guess what? There would be no us. Mm. <laughs> you know? So 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 it's important for us mm. to, to to acknowledge and 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 unfortunately motherhood and womanhood and also being a what they used to call a, a housewife, a homemaker, mm. is often a, a unrequited task, um, a, a task of unrequited love. People don't really acknowledge that the way they should. People don't really say thank you as much as they should. They don't make you feel as if you are actually working. Mm. But, but, but listen to any, any working woman. Mm. When she goes on annual leave, 
and you ask her, how's your annual leave going? How's your rest going? You know what they say? 99.999% of them say, oh, there's no rest. I'm working more now while I'm at home than when I work, when I'm at work. Because at work, there are certain working hours. At work, there's a break, uh, uh, lunch time and tea time. At home, uh, uh, the work never stops. And you know what? The work never stops, especially when the mother is there. Mm. Then it seems there's more work because now everybody else pulls back and they relax. Mommy is at home. Yes. Mommy's gonna do it. <laughs> so, so that is a largely a thankless role. But this great woman calls herself not a king, not a prophetess, not a general. She says, "I'm a mother mm. in Israel, and I want to I want to encourage all these mothers. It is time for you, godly mothers." to rise up in this nation. It is time for you to rise and to give our future generations a proper fighting chance. Now, I want us to, to, to look more closely into the character of Deborah. Um, this is what Deborah did. She was this um, judge. She, she used to sit uh, in high office. People came to her for advice. Um, and when we look at that, we might feel inferior and we might think that Deborah is the spiritual giant and we can never uh, 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 be what she, what she was or do what she did. But we should never, ever, ever guard against this presumption that, that God uses qualified people. Mm -hmm. God never, ever, ever, ever used one qualified person mm -hmm. <laughs> right throughout this entire scripture. He always uses normal people. Mm -hmm. Deborah called herself a mother because she was a normal woman. Mm. But when the Spirit of God came upon her, she, 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 she acted and led and inspired, uh, uh, supernaturally inspired. And, but she was a normal woman. Mm. She, 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 didn't, uh, she didn't come from, the, from, 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 from Oxford University. She, mm. she, she didn't come from Yale. She, 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 she never had, the Bible tells us, and, and when God was done with him, normal boy by the name of David when God was done with him he was the king kings in those days were were born in succession you couldn't just become a king you had to become you had to be coming from a kingly family but when God calls a normal person he will do extraordinary things in the life of that normal person so 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 I want to um Bring us to a point of application mm. shortly. Matthew 20 verse 28. Matthew chapter 20, 28. Jesus says the following. He says to his disciples, I, the son of man, came not to be served, but to serve and to lay down my life as a ransom for many. Mm. So, so, so Jesus says that his purpose was fulfilled in serving. When he served, he fulfilled his purpose. You know what? Deborah served. Mm. Mommy, when you make a cup of tea for your family, guess what you are doing? You are serving. Mm. When you get up early and you're preparing a meal, guess what you are doing? You are serving. Mm. When you clean the house, guess what you are doing? You are serving. Greatness is built upon service. Mm. Uh, uh, Jesus said, I didn't come to be served, but I came to serve and to lay down my life as a ransom for many and and i want to encourage you it doesn't matter what you do keep on serving jesus said if anybody wants to be great among you let him or her become the servant of all there is nothing menial about serving mm. there's nothing menial about taking that broom and and sweeping mm. there's nothing menial about when i'm at home and i see it's dirty i take the broom and i sweep i don't lose anything mm. I, I i when i see this uh, uh, the family is away and i'm alone there and i say hey, it's too much washing i fill up that washing machine and this is wa mm. the thing washes it himself Mm -hmm. I just need to put it in there. Mm -hmm. I uh, see the dishes there. I can. I, I don't lose any of my being this man of God by serving. Mm -hmm. uh, if I see that, hey, family is maybe not at home and, and, and maybe they will be back home late, mm -hmm. I start cooking. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and by the time they get home, I dish up. I've served. I've lost nothing. I just, I've gained just more love and respect mm -hmm. from my family. Mm -hmm. so, so there's nothing menial about serving. Mm -hmm. Jesus said there's nothing that diminishes you or makes you less important if you serve. 
When I go to church and if I'm the first one there and I see it's dirty, I sweep the place. Mm. I dust off those chairs if I'm there first. Mm. If I see the musicians are not there, guess what? I, I, I grew up my whole life in the house of God. I will start playing musician. I will get my mic stand. I will start worshiping when they come. I'll hand over to me. I, I serve. I'm not doing this to impress people or for myself. I'm doing this for God. Mm. Because Colossians chapter 3 verse 24 says, whatever you do mm. in word or in deed mm. do it as unto the Lord not to please men but as if you are doing it for God mm. that tells me that God takes notice mm. of that piece of paper that you are picking up mm. God has got a book of works you know what if I pick up a paper I'm working <laughs> I have to go down and I have to go up mm. I'm it's written there on that date he picked up a piece of paper the mm. Bible says you will be rewarded mm. according to your works. People will not acknowledge you. Mm. But God says, I am not unjust mm. to forget your labor. Whatever you are doing, there's nothing small. If you want to prove, the, if, 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 if you want to really check if I'm speaking the truth, you want to, you want to verify this. Mm. You know what you can try and do? Uh, don't do it practically, but rather check, do an do a internet search. What happens if you cut off your two smallest toes on your feet? It seems they are just there. It seems they are doing nothing. It seems they are insignificant and important. But you know what? If you lose them, your balance is out. You won't be able to stand. You will fall to the left or fall to the right. Th their job is to anchor your feet. If, if they are gone, your feet, is, it's as if you are standing on a round, something that is round mm. and you're going to fall. You won't be able to, to even stand, much less walk, much less run because the, the anchor is gone. But that, those toes, they seem so small mm. and so insignificant. But, if, but God in his wisdom creates small and insignificant mm. things to do great things. Hallelujah. That is why that is why he gave us little toes mm. so that something small can teach us that, yay, there's nothing or nobody too small mm. or too unimportant to be used mm. by God. Now, 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 as I, I come to application, mm. um, Matthew 20 verse 28 says, um, Jesus said he came to serve, not to be served. Mm. Now, Deborah also uh, had a service model or a um, uh, 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 method mm. in which she served. Um, and I want to just take that out of this text before before we conclude. Um, Deborah had an ABC of greatness mm. that she is teaching us, or that she, or that we can learn from her. The ABC of greatness. First of all, the the A. Deborah was available. Mm. You know, during a time when, that's the A, during a time when the people of Israel did what was wrong, the Bible says, Judges chapter 4, verse 1 to 4, and I'm just going to read it. It says, Judges 4, verse 1 to 4, Again the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, now that Ehud the judge was dead. So the Lord sold them into the hands of Jabin the king of Canaan, uh, who reigned in Hazor. Sisera, the commander of his army, was based in Harashit, Hagoyim, because he had 900 chariots filled with iron and had cruelly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. They cried to the Lord for help. Now Deborah, a prophet, the wife of Lapidoth, was leading Israel at that time. When the people cried out for help, mm. there was someone who stepped forward, who said, here I am, like the prophet Isaiah, here I am, Lord, mm. send me availability. God just needs availability. Now, now availability has got a couple of um, uh, 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 possibilities attached to it. First of all, there is the possibility of availability says that the others are not willing mm. and you are willing. Mm. The availability also implies that 
uh, others, those that are not willing, will ridicule and, 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 and come against the one who is willing. Mm -hmm. so, so you have to be brave and you have to be strong to be available because everybody who's pulling back will, will obviously mm -hmm. persecute the one who's stepping forward. Mm -hmm. Look at the life of David. When, the, uh, when Saul and his whole army and all of his sons mm -hmm. were hiding from this giant mm -hmm. and David stepped forward, you know what his brother said to him? Mm -hmm. His brother said to him, you are too curious. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you don't even belong here. You just want to come see the action. Mm -hmm. Go away. They, they ridiculed and persecuted him mm -hmm. because he made himself available. Sure. And then they mocked him. You are a shepherd boy. This one was a warrior from his youth. He's going to destroy you. Mm. There's a very sore and hard burden on availability because availability, those people who are scared and afraid will tell you that you are forward. Mm. They'll tell you that you are that you are that you think too much of yourself. You are filled mm. with pride. They 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 don't understand that 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 God doesn't look for ability. Mm. He looks for availability. Yeah. He when 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 he looked for a prophet, he mm. asked in in Isaiah um, chapter six. Who am I going to send? Who's going to? And the prophet, as I said, here I am, Lord, send me. But the prophet was reluctant because he he, he had some moral issues. Mm -hmm. He had some moral failures. Mm -hmm. uh, he had a dirty, uh, 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 dirty people, and they also influenced him to be dirty in his mm -hmm. mouth. He was also going after their ways, speaking mm -hmm. the way they spoke. And God, and God said to him, "It's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cleanse you." So, so the 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 benefit of availability is divine assistance because God is going to help you. Uh, if, if, if There's a scripture that says if God is for us, who can be against us? So, so if God helps you, 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 you become more than you were before. You become better than you were before. And, and God just needs your availability. Even as a woman, He just wants your availability. We are told the whole bad story here in three verses. And then in the fourth verse, we are told that now Deborah mm. was there mm. and she was leading. I believe there are Deborahs. Mm. You are there. You mm. just need to rise. Mm. You are there in that house of God. Mm. You just need to rise. Mm. You are there in that street, in that community, but you just need to rise. Mm. You are there in that family, mm. but you must simply rise mm. up uh, mm. to the challenge. Then I want to read the second thing about Deborah. Um, Judges chapter 4 and verse 8. Mm. The Bible says the following. Barak said to her, If you go with me, I will go. Mm -hmm. But if you don't go with me, I won't go. Mm -hmm. Now think about this. A, a, a military general mm -hmm. comes to the wife of someone and says, I must go fight in the army. Uh, I must go fight the war. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. I'll only go if you come with me. He must have seen something in this woman. He must have noticed that there was a particular boldness. Now, the ABC of, of, of greatness, first is the availability. Mm -hmm. Secondly is boldness. Mm -hmm. This general, even though Deborah was a judge and she was sitting there between Rama and Bethel, he saw, uh, apart from political power, and religious influence, he saw military power on this lady. Mm -hmm. He said, I, 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 I'm a trained soldier, mm -hmm. but I'm not going alone if you don't come with me. He saw boldness on this woman, you know. So, so, and the reason why she was bold, she retained her boldness and her bravery because of her unwavering faith in God. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you, ladies, it's not about you. It's not about what you can and what you cannot do. Mm -hmm. It's about what God can and will through you mm -hmm. if you just believe. The Bible says, says all things are possible with God. Matthew 19 verse 26 all things are possible with God for those who believe. If you just believe you know people will come to you and people will often see in you what mm. you don't see in yourself before you even saw it. Mm. You know people will see what God has placed on you. Mm. This lady uh, she, 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 she had faith and 
a faith became visible. The mm. general said, I, I, "I'm afraid to go, but if you, it's like you, know, it's like I, uh, 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 when we were when we were children, mm. some of us, I wasn't one of them because I was the eldest. Mm. So I always had to be the general. I always had to be the leader. I always had to be the brave one and strong one. But some of my siblings were afraid of the dark mm. at night. When it's time to go to the loo, when it's time to go do number one, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, wake up someone else. And the the thing that always made me laugh is like someone like that's close to my age would wake up someone who's like 10 years their junior <laughs> and say come with me <laughs> I'll come with me to the loo <laughs> this is what was happening here the general says to the housewife please come with me if you don't come with me I'm not because he saw this woman has got faith now 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 Barak and these men they just won the victory simply because of this woman's boldness. Mm. This woman, this woman was so bold that uh, the army came and said, "Please come with us." You know, they desired a presence. Let me prophesy over these ladies that are listening: Your presence will make the difference. Mm. If your presence carries the presence of God, mm. make sure mm. you spend time in the presence of God. When you go into that situation, into that business place, into that workplace, into that family, into that church, your mere presence, you haven't said anything, you haven't done anything, but the fact that you are there, mm. God said to Joshua, every place you place your feet, you haven't even spoken, mm. you haven't even talk you haven't even started proclaiming you have just placed your foot there mm. it is yours because when the presence of god rests upon you mm. your presence will make a difference that was the boldness of deborah she was available a availability b she was bold mm. c she was confident the abc of greatness is availability boldness and confidence availability means i am willing to go boldness means it doesn't matter uh, what comes against me i'm still going confidence means i am telling myself no matter what you see trust in god you know so 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 judges chapter 4 verse 14 listen to the confidence in this lady this lady was convinced that god was with her and and, he, and she was the advance that god was faithful to save his people he was she was advanced that convinced that god would lead them to victory and now listen listen to what she says in judges 4 verse 14 then deborah said to barak go this is the day the lord has given sisera into your hands has not the lord gone ahead of you so barak went down mount tabor with ten thousand men following him this woman was so confident before the battle started she saw in the spirit mm. she said go this is the day god has given mm. she speaks about a future events in the past tense she says has not the lord gone in front of you she speaks of the battle as if it was already done i want to encourage you ladies speak in faith speak in confidence uh, the book of proverbs 18 verse 21 says life and death is in the power of the tongue and whoever wants to use it will eat the whoever loves using it will eat the fruit thereof we can speak life or we can speak death speak life into your situation this battle has hasn't even started and Deborah says go this day God has given uh, the enemy into your hands this is the day that God has gone ahead of you mm. she speaks of something that doesn't happen as if it has already happened mm. I believe this woman had some some profound spiritual insight because it seems as if she's quoting the new testament from the old testament romans chapter 4 verse 17 abraham believed in god and that's why he was called the father of the faithful and he believed that god could resurrect the dead and call those things that are not as though they are this woman called those things that are not as though they are i want to encourage you never allow the enemy to silence you speak there's power there's life here speak positive and speak life into your situation so the the, the, the nation now experienced peace for 40 years due to deborah's availability boldness and her confidence i want to 
conclude here and say that Deborah was a woman of influence. Mm. Her spiritual mantle teaches us the importance of availability, boldness, and confidence for both men and for women. Mm. You know why both men and, and, and both women? Mm. Because the Bible says Barak won the victory. Mm. And uh, if you read what we have just read, mm. Barak would not even have pitched for the battle mm. if Deborah didn't tell him, go. God has given them into your hands. Today, God has given you the victory. Go. Mm. He was pulling back until he came to Deborah. And Deborah inspired him, motivated him through her availability to be the mouthpiece of God. Through a boldness to speak those things that are not as though they are. Through a confidence to trust God even irrespective of what things look like. She, 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 she motivated this general to go into the army, to go into the war. Mm. And he basically won, I and and I, I want to I want to I want to tell us that you know what Barak's name means blessing, mm. but the only reason why he was blessed in this instance mm. was because of Deborah's availability, mm. boldness, and confidence. The ABC of greatness. Then I want to conclude with Judges chapter five, and verse thirty-one. This is the last thing that we are told about Deborah in the scriptures. And we never hear about Deborah again because I believe that God was done here showing us prophetically uh, uh, through that historical narrative, showing us how, how our ABC can benefit many generations. You know, availability, boldness, and confidence. And the Bible says, Judges 5 and 31, and the land rested undisturbed for 40 years due to the influence of Deborah. Mm. Think about that. In the Bible, 40 years is normally a, 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 a period of time that, that, that speaks of a generation. Mm. It's a prophetic number that speaks to generations. Mm. This woman caused a generation to rest undisturbed just by being available, bold, mm. and confident. I want to encourage our ladies during August 2022, we have some Deborahs and they must rise. Mm. We have them in our homes, in our streets, in our communities, mm. in, our, in our local assemblies in the Church of Jesus Christ. We have them, mm. but they need to rise. Mm. Now, I'm not saying you go and you attack the men and grab the men by their throat and say, Yeah, long enough. Have you pressed us? No, 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 no. We am not, I'm not talking about that nonsense. That's counterproductive. That's the world. What I'm telling you is rise up. Deborah rose up, and because she rose up, an entire am army rose up. She didn't fight against her mm. own. She inspired her own by 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 taking them mm. and hooking them in mm. and, and, and lifting them up. Mm. That is what we need. Mm. We need the Deborahs to rise. Mm. And you know what? Once the Deborahs rise, mm. I want to use Judges 5 and 31 as a prophetic utterance. This land, South Africa, will rest undisturbed for a generation. We mm. need the Debras to rise in this generation mm. so that the next generation, our children that are growing up now, mm. can experience mm. rest and mm. be mm. undisturbed. Mm. You don't need to do much. Mm. Just be available. Mm. You don't need to have a degree, mm. a PhD. Mm. You don't need to have a diploma. Mm. You don't need to, nothing. You don't mm. need the money. It's, it's not about that. Mm. It's about saying, here I am, Lord. Mm. Use me. Mm. I'm available. Uh, it's about being bold and mm. saying, uh, uh, my God will supply all my needs mm. according to his riches in glory. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's boldness. It's about being confident. Philippians 1 verse 6. In this thing we are confident that he who has started a good work in you will complete it until the day of Christ. There are powerful ladies. Mm. 
You know, no, you know the devil. The devil knew how powerful these ladies were. Yeah. I, I, I want to, I want to place a different spin on Genesis chapter three. Mm. People use Genesis chapter three to tell women, you see, you are so stupid. You see, you listen to the devil. You see, it's because of you the world is in this mess. No, 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 no. I want to, I want to turn this thing around. Do you know why the devil came to the woman? He knew how powerful she was. Mm. She didn't realize her mm. own power. Mm. He knew the woman was the gateway. Mm. Uh, into the physical realm. Mm. So he needed to go to the gateway mm. to try and block future generations mm. from coming through the mm. gateway. And you know what God did? He did the same thing. Matthew chapter 1, he went to the gateway mm. and he said to the angel, go talk to the gateway and tell the gateway you are blessed and highly favored and okay. through you a great savior will come. He did the same thing to nullify, to cancel out what the devil did in Genesis. Mm. He went to the gateway. Today you are still the gateway. Mm. The ladies, you are still the mm. gateway mm. into society. Mm. None of the men, I'm not, I'm not demanding Promoting men, I'm not stupid. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not tatty in my head. There's a word that's called tatty. You know, tatty when you are mad. I'm not mad. I'm not saying men are less or or lower or or, or lesser importance than women. No, I'm saying that we are here to complement one another. Mm. And you know what? None of the men that are on earth mm. would be here today unless there was a gateway who was a woman who, mm. who brought them here. Mm. So this thing of abusing women, it's nonsense. It must stop. Mm. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's just counterintuitive. How mm. can how can you drive in your car and then you destroy your car again? Mm. How can you live in your house and burn down your house? Mm. And how can you come through the gateway and then fight the gateway mm. again? It doesn't make sense. Mm. It's the devil. So, so I want to tell the ladies, you are powerful in your own right. Mm. Rise up. There are some barracks mm. who need a Deborah to mm. get up so that that barrack can get up and go fight. Deborah never took a sword or whatever or, 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 a, or, a, or a javelin or a spear or a bow. She never touched any weapon. She motivated the one who was supposed to pick up the weapons and go. Mm. Hand in hand, guys. This mm. is this is how we're gonna stop mm. our children from going into drugs and, mm. and, 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 and and all of these negative things. Mm. That is how we're gonna help the next generation. Mm. Judges 5, verse 31, to rest undisturbed. Mm. The next generation needs the men and the women in this generation to get together and rise up mm. and not fight one another mm. and not bad mouth one another. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm sick and tired of these people that always uh, it's the because of the men, it's mm. because of the women, it's because that is not gonna mm. bring us anywhere. Look mm. to the past. Did it bring us anywhere all these years? Nowhere. What we need to do is get together. Mm. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. That's the that's the that's the solution, sir. Mm. It says, and in Christ there is no therefore no man, no woman, no male, no female, no Jew, no Greek, no bond, no free. But in Christ we are all one and Christ is everything in everyone. If we can get to that unity, behold how blessed it is when brethren and sisters get together in unity. There God will command the blessing. The only reason why Barak won this war was because Deborah acted in unity yeah. with with him mm. uh, he, he he needed to go she needed to tell him to go uh, mm. he needed to fight she needed to tell him to fight uh, uh, he needed to know that god was there she needed to tell him hey god was there mm. you know so so it's important and and i cannot stress this enough mm. the devil is using the vision to mm. destroy us mm. male versus female mm. black versus white mm. this versus that it's mm. it's stupid guys mm. it's 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 it's, mm. it's silly mm. it's not gonna bring us anywhere if we if we get together mm will be so powerful. Mm. Genesis 11 says, God says, when the people got together, he said, nothing will be impossible to them anymore because they are now united. Mm. Once we get united, that's why the enemy, the mm. enemy likes this thing. I know there's a purpose for all denominations mm. of churches, mm. but the enemy likes this thing that there are 10 denominations fighting against each other mm. of the same Christian faith. How <laughs> devoid of logic that is. Mm. The, those 
10 must be in 10 different areas, appeal to 10 different communities, and bring them all to Jesus Christ. Mm. That's why there are, there are many denominations, not to bicker and fight mm. and, and, and degrade and, uh, one another. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's very important for us to realize that the next generation is waiting it is like it is like it is like a relay race. I, when I was much younger, I used to run the relay. I I I, I used to run the third bend. I enjoyed it. Mm. They put me in the last, but I didn't like the last one because sometimes people would come to you last. Mm. Then you have a terrible time in that I last hundred meter swords <laughs> trying to catch up. So I preferred the third. Mm. Then I, I make sure people who know me. <laughs> they'll tell you I don't need to tell you they, they'll tell you you can come to me last on that bend but I'll make sure on that bend I'm past all of them I give first and our team won that's how we got as far as we got into athletics you know? mm. and, 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 and we must see ourselves as one of those four runners mm. running with a baton mm. and the next generation is waiting for that baton when they receive the baton it must be a baton that will be a baton of availability, mm -hmm. boldness, confidence. It must mm -hmm. be a baton of unity. It must mm -hmm. be a battle uh, of, 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 of fearing God. It mm -hmm. must be a battle of being the salt of the earth and the light of the world. When they receive that baton, the, it must be easy for them. Mm -hmm. They cannot go through the st same struggles that mm -hmm. we went through. That mm -hmm. means if they go through the same struggles we went through, why were we even alive in the first place? That means we wasted God's time mm. on this planet. Mm. We did nothing mm. to benefit the next mm. generation. We need to, all the Debras, please rise mm. so that the Baraks can also rise and win the war. Mm. If the Debras don't rise, we are in trouble. <laughs> so, 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 so let's make sure as we go into Women's Month, let's, let, 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 let's use it as an opportunity mm. to bring reconciliation and to bring um, peace mm. between the genders and to bring also purpose mm. to the male and the female gender mm. so that the next mm. generation, mm. according to Judges 5.31, can rest mm. in peace mm. undisturbed mm. in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord Amen. bless you, sir. Amen. 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 Wasn't that nice? Amen. <laughs> that Amen. was amazing i'm praise so blessed here yeah, i was just like saying hallelujah I am you know all the time praise god yes, what sir. an incredible word as you said you know what we need you deborah yes wherever you are Amen. all the deborahs you know you might be in china yes you might be in pakistan yes sir. you might be in brazil listening to us right now yes you sir. might be somewhere in alaska mm. in the cold of winter ah, but god ah, is calling ah. you Yes, sir. God is calling you to calling rise you. up. As yes. Patrick has said, yes, sir. the A of availability. Yes, sir. The B of boldness. Yes, sir. And the C of confidence. Yes, sir. That's what you need. That's what you need. Glory you are God. needed. You are important. And you have a purpose in yes, the sir. body of Christ in this generation yes. and for eternity oh, i'm yes. so blessed because you know it just it just pointed out the importance yes, of the sir. women in the body of christ oh yes, yes. even in christ's yes. ministry in his yes. life, in his earthly ministry he used them yes sir women were yes always were there were there to provide oh yes <laughs> oh yes they were yes, there indeed. with him every single day thank you so much pastor Mark. yes sir um, Glory be to God. You can just uh, give a word of Certainly, encouragement sir. and you can pray for us. Certainly, sir. I, 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 I was so blessed now just listening to the man of God saying that, 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 that it doesn't matter where you are around the world. God is not limited by your location. We need to really understand that. And then I also want to acknowledge, I want to acknowledge two of the, the, the men that I, that I really love and, 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 and honor and respect so very much. Um, Pastor Matthew Scrooney, my brother, uh, he was here ministering last week when I was in Gauteng. Uh, he was ministering. I was holding the fourth year on God and me time. Uh, thank you for your comment, sir. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. Uh, was that comment? We appreciate that. Thank you to uh, uh, another man whom I also greatly love and respect. Uh, I had the honor of staying with this great man of God and his family, Pastor Andres Hermans uh, in uh, Devlin, in, 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 in Johannesburg, in Freedom Park. Uh, he stays, I, I, I now realize why he's always wearing a Kaiser Chiefs t-shirt. He stays right around the corner from Naturina. <laughs> I saw that when I was there. We passed Naturina to get to his house. So, Pastor Andres Hermans, thank you, sir, for your comment. And his comment was, we give God glory for an insightful and powerful word amen so i want to i want to uh, acknowledge everybody who uh, followed us everybody who liked us um we have here veronica jacobs who was uh, uh, liking what we did here this morning uh, amongst many others i saw here uh, our our Gape family i also saw the man of god john i saw peter all of you liking what we did here this morning may the lord richly bless you um, during this time it is such a privilege and honor just to be used by god as a as a vessel even our international audience we appreciate you guys um those that are listening from all over the world may the lord just 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 bless you with an increase in this abc with an increase in availability an increase in boldness and an increase in confidence i i i'm, I'm reminded uh, of of a story um and uh, this story is that uh, and I'm, I'm saying this in closing this story is that there was a drought and then there was a day of prayer mm. that was called and on the day of prayer all the adults went and they went to the specific place to pray and um, out of all of the people who went only one little girl took an umbrella along and the and it, and it was shining the sun was shining it was very hot uh, and the woman and the girl when they were while they were praying she opened her umbrella <laughs> And she held it and she prayed for rain. And the people asked her, but why did you bring an umbrella along? And she said, because we are praying for rain. <laughs> it's going to rain. <laughs> you see that childlike faith. Mm. Just be prepared that the thing that God um, is purposing in your life will transpire. Mm. And, and I, I want to encourage you, get ready. Because if... You are, if we are going to pray now in the next mm -hmm. few moments mm -hmm. for increased availability, mm -hmm. increased boldness, increased con confidence, it means that there will be people will come, there will be increasing, there will be an increase in the people who reach out to you. Mm -hmm. There will be people who will come. So, so be like this little girl. Mm -hmm. When the people come, be ready. Mm -hmm. This little girl was ready when the rain comes. Mm -hmm. I've got my umbrella. Mm -hmm. So so I also want to pray for an increase in your capacity mm -hmm. uh, for for that availability or you, an increase in your capacity for boldness, mm -hmm. an increase in your, in your capacity for confidence mm -hmm. so that by the time when these people come, you won't say I'm too busy, mm -hmm. I'm too this, I'm too that. You will, you will, you will grab the opportunity. Mm -hmm. You'll already have your, your umbrella mm -hmm. Praise God. So, Father God, we come before your throne this morning, and we are just so grateful, Lord. Mm -hmm. Father, thank you for this opportunity, Father God, to speak life into our woman. Yes. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity that we can use gospel truth, mm -hmm. Father God, to enlighten people, Father God, to their role mm -hmm. in contemporary society, Father. I thank mm -hmm. you, Lord, Father God, for um, those who have listened in, Father, Pastor Andres Hermans, uh, Pastor Cynthia Har Hermans, Pastor Matthews, Skuni, his wife, um, Pastor Henrietta Skuni, thank you, Father, for, for these people and so many others. Father, thank you, Father God, for uh, Veronica Jacobs and so many others who have, who have tuned in this morning. Father, I pray that you would touch them all, that you would be with them all. Father, that you would meet them at the, at the point of their need. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray for an increase in our capacity for av availability. Yes. I pray for an increase in our capacity for boldness. Mm -hmm. I pray, Father, for an increase in our capacity for confidence. Mm -hmm. Father God, that even as the enemy comes in like a flood, that the Lord would every time raise up a standard mm -hmm. against him. 
Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, Father, that the Debras would rise, Father God. I pray in the name of Jesus, Father God, that even as, Father, eagles rise, Father, on the winds of the storm, that even so, whatever adversity comes against us, we will just soar high above it. We will just spread out our wings and rise up, Father. I know, Father, that it is your will and your purpose for us, Father God, to be the head and not the tail, to be above and not beneath, to be in front and not behind, to be impactful in society. I pray in the name of Jesus that wherever we are, Father, that people will will see God, even as Barak saw God in, in, in Deborah. Uh, Father God, even as he was motivated to go into the battle because he was encouraged by Deborah, allow us to be encouragers wherever we go. I pray in the name of Jesus that the body of Christ would be united as never before. I pray, Father God, that the women in the body of Christ would rise up, Father, as a united force, Father, Father, so that the next generation can rest in peace. I come against every other spirit that normally target our women, the spirit of despondency, the spirit of uh, uh, gossip, uh, the spirit, uh, Father God, of low self-esteem, uh, the spirit, Father God, of competitiveness, Father, in the name of Jesus, the spirit of pride, I come against it in the name of Jesus, Father, and I speak deliverance over our women, Father, so that they can rise, Father, so that they can rise as one in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I give you praise, I give you glory, I give you honor, I lift up your holy and precious name. Father God, I lift up your name in this place, Father. Thank you for this platform, Agape Radio, Father, where we can speak the gospel truth without fear or favor, Father, with no agenda restricting us, Father. Father, thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can speak the truth that sets us free, Father, on this platform. I pray for your blessing over this platform, Father, over the visionary of this platform, the management, the leadership, everybody involved with this platform in the name of Jesus. Would you bless them indeed in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, I pray, Father, as we enter Women's Month, Father, Father, I pray that after this Women's Month, we would see a change. Father, we would see a move of the Holy Spirit that will that that will revolutionize, Father, Father, our women and their thinking and their actions in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, that the women, Father, that are hearing this word, even those, Father, under the sound of our voice, Father God, even those, Father, that we are praying for, all the women, Father, that the Holy Spirit would lead them and guide them, Father, because we need them. We need them to rise up. We need them, Father God, to be a blessing to us in the name of Jesus. Father, I also pray today, Father, as um, our dear sister Eureka is celebrating her birthday today, I pray God's blessing over her life in the name of Jesus. Father, I also pray, Father, as we are celebrating our 17th anniversary today, myself and my wife, I pray, Father God, with, that you would bless us indeed. I pray, Father God, for Agape FM. I pray, Father God, as we go tomorrow into our services, Father God, I pray that you, the Holy Spirit would lead us and guide us, Father, as in most ministries, the ladies are going to minister this month, Father, I pray, Father, your blessing over those ladies. Father, I pray, Father God, that you would that you would anoint their tongues with fire, anoint their minds and their bodies and their heads with fresh oil in the mighty name of Jesus. Come and be glorified, Father God. I pray also for those mothers, Father God, uh, Father, that are struggling with family issues, uh, that are struggling with strife between their children and their husbands. I pray, pray for those blended families, Father God, that are experiencing some, some, some battles, some strife, Father. I even pray, Father, for the situation in Johannesburg, my God. Uh, Father God, where there are family members on both sides, uh, Father, struggling and, 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 and having strife towards one another. Mm -hmm. I pray, Father, the peace of God that, mm -hmm. that, that, that goes above our understanding, Father. Mm -hmm. Father God, that you would anoint them, Father, with mm -hmm. your goodness and your mercy in Jesus' name. Come and be glorified. Come and be lifted up. Come and be exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise, honor, and so much glory in Jesus name amen and amen hallelujah amen. praise amen. God hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank, thank you, you so much thank you for those thank who've been Jesus. tuning in on our 
Hallelujah. on our Facebook platform. Oh, yes. And all those who have been tuning on our radio platform, we really appreciate. Mm. Thank you so much, Pastor Mark. Thank you, sir. And happy anniversary. Amen. God <laughs> bless you. Thank you, And sir. your wife. Thank you, sir. Uh, it is blessed. Uh, you know, it is such an incredible blessing uh, oh, to yes, be serving here on this platform. Oh, Thank yes, you so indeed. much. Uh, yes. Ladies and gents, we just want to encourage you to tune in every single Saturday at mm -hmm. exactly 10 a.m. Ah, so really that you yeah. don't miss anything. Amen. We're going to end this show with an incredible song from Paul Wilbur, all the way from the Holy Land. Amen. Baruch Adonai. Ah, oh, bless God the bless Lord. You. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord.